he just will not accept any responsibility. I mean, he is just placing it all on Natalie and even the hurtful comments. I mean, he's just really making disparaging remarks about her throughout his uh, interviews. I was alone this time when I watched it. Um, but yes, I have seen it in its entirety, and uh, I really don't plan on watching it again, though. I think I really saw everything I need to. Natalie Holloway's mother, Beth, reacting to a 2006 ABC interview with Joran Vandersloat, who at the time was the main suspect in her daughter's disappearance. Do you remember the last time you saw her? Yeah, the last time I saw her was when I told her I was going to go to Deepak's car. And how was Natalie? And she was sitting in the, on the sand by the ocean. Did it seem like a wrong thing to do, leaving a girl on the beach like that? At that moment in time, for me, it wasn't the wrong thing, but it's definitely the wrong thing to do. I mean, it's not something a real man would do. It's not normal. It's not right at all. What did I make of the interview? Um, you know, I think it's probably great that Yaron is coming forward and speaking because every time he gets on camera or grants an interview, he tells another lie, and then more lies just evolve from that. So I think that eventually, um, you know, who knows? Maybe that the prosecuting attorney could get to the bottom of this just by the series of lies that Yaron tells because, I mean, he certainly has a string of them. One huge discrepancy is initially he was telling interrogators that Deepak Kalpo had picked him up at the fisherman's hut. But now, during this interview, he's saying that he's changed it to Satish has picked him up. I think that Yaron has done this all along, but I think he's just really now being able to share it with uh, everyone else. Is he always places the blame on Natalie, whether it's from the initiation to the contact of the point of their meeting, um, whether it is uh, any alcohol involved, the initiation of when they le left the establishment, the initiation of the sexual contact. Everything is placed on Natalie. He accepts absolutely no responsibility for any of the activities or actions that occurred. And, you know, that's, that just has to be a sign of either guilt or some type of sociopath, it would seem to me. I mean, I think that when they hear these things coming from Yaron, that it just really shores him up as he is involved in the disappearance of Natalie. Why would he have fabricated a story within a few hours of the family landing on the island? And not only fabricated a story, but you have to look at the elements that went into play in that. Any family, when you have a missing loved one, whether it's within our borders or in a foreign country, you know, you just want answers. I mean, the nightmare does not end for parents of missing loved ones until, until they have answers. And that's all that we want in this. We know that Yaron Vandersloat and his father Paulus and Deepak and Satish Kalpo have the answers. They know what happened to Natalie that night. And, uh, you know, we want to get to the bottom of it. Of course, we would love to see the Aruban, and Aruban criminal justice system prevail in Natalie's case, but so far that hasn't happened. And I really can't say that it will, but uh, at least getting answers would be a start. There is nothing that I would say to Yaron right now. Um, you know, it's, we filed a civil suit now against him, so what I would like to happen now is, now that Yaron is willing to come to New York and speak freely, I don't see why that he should have any difficulties coming to New York now and speaking under oath and uh, answering some questions. So I think Yaron has uh, shown us that he's ready to do this. So hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it.